do a little bit of background about how we got here and, and why I'm involved. Uh, I grew up in the Milwaukee area. I went to undergrad and grad school at Marquette University and I'm very lucky to have two amazing role models for our parents. My dad was in advertising. My mom was in the medical field. My mom is a rare breed of subtle and strong and her science brain is always in high gear and she's always asking like, all the right questions. My dad's a businessman, he's so smart and also luckily smart enough to know like when to stand beside my mom as her partner, when to push her and when to just quietly step back and let her shine. So I, I think this has definitely shaped who, who I am today. Uh, they taught me the importance of working hard to reach your goals and knowledge is power. Um, you know, I realize not everybody has this mix of influence growing up. We all have very unique experiences and we don't know what we don't know. So that's a big part of why, why we're here today. Um, how can we take action if we aren't informed and how can we be informed if nobody talks about it? Um, so when asked who is the audience for this call, my immediate response was any woman who has ever thought about retirement and anyone who knows a woman who has ever thought about retirement. Um, knowledge is power. Uh, and if anyone had asked me when I finished undergrad what I wanted to do with my life, I, I would have said educate women. Uh, one of my majors was anthropology. Dr. Sullivan had me very concerned about overpopulation. And essentially, as the education of women goes up in society, we see a correlation with declining birth weight, birth rates. So what a great way to combat overpopulation. This is a real win-win. Uh, fast forward about two decades. I've been with Baird now almost 10 years. I haven't saved the world. Um, however, my she-wolf mindset is still strong, but with the experience I've gained at Bear, the way I, I manage my finances has changed. And um, I'm happy to say that I am helping educate women. Historically, the financial services industry didn't exactly factor women into its planning. And historically, there, there wasn't much planning until recently, the industry was really very focused on the markets and portfolio performance. And while that is a very important component of any financial plan, it by no means is the only influencing factor so whether or not we achieve our financial goals. And given that financial goals tend to be life goals, planning is very important. So the industry as a whole is, is making this shift, but Baird realized the importance of planning long before I was here. And uh, we, we recognize investors typically have you know, similar financial priorities and goals, regardless of gender. But we also know that for various reasons, women are, are faced with unique challenges. And we discuss a lot of these situations on, mm -hmm. on Baird Wealth. But we took a really deep dive into the good, bad, ugly within our women's retirement guide. And I've had the pleasure of working very closely with Heather to bring this guide to life. To say that she is a subject matter expert would be an understatement. And she also shares my passion for educating women, our mothers, our daughters, wives, sisters, aunts, friends, girlfriends. So that is why we are here to learn a little bit more about how to educate ourselves and the ones we love. And with that, I will hand it over. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. And uh, thank you to everyone for joining us this, joining us this afternoon. Um, I'm happy to be a part of this conversation that we're having here collectively. And um, part of uh, my goal in us having this conversation is that you feel empowered um, in, in, in being on a path to financial success in your own retirement, whatever that may look like for you going forward. And as a leader here at Baird in planning, we, we want planning to be the anchor of our relationship with our clients. Um, it is your goals and your dreams and your aspirations that we strive to help you achieve through, through financial advice. So as a part of our conversation here today, wanted to take the opportunity to think through the high level building blocks or, or what will be the fundamentals to your financial success and retirement. And so we're going to spend some time 
thinking through what are the questions you need to ask yourself? What are the things you need to be thinking through? And what are practical measures that you can take in achieving your own financial success? So we're going to think through some big questions like, am I on track for retirement? What, you know, what are my goals? What do I want to be doing? Where will I be? But as a part of this, this conversation, we recognize, as Amanda alluded to, that there are unique circumstances that women face as a part of their retirement. And so we'd like to explore these together as a part of our conversation. And one element that, that comes to mind right off the bat is that women have a longer life expectancy. We live longer. And so this is something we need to take into consideration as, as we think about our planning. But before we start to delve into uh, the details of retirement, I wanted to take a moment to share a, a chapter from my own story uh, in, in my own life and, and how that helped to shape my thinking um, you know, as, an, as, as a woman, as a mother, um, and, and my own financial success, and then, and then how it's applicable today as, as a planner. And when I was 10 years old, uh, my parents had, had divorced, and every other weekend, I would spend the weekend, you know, at, at alternating between my parents' homes. And on this one particular weekend, I was at my dad's house, and I'll never forget, it was, it was a Saturday evening, and I actually had a friend spend the night, and we were sitting on the living room floor, we were playing the game of life. And if you, if you recall the game of life, it had the wheel that you, you, know, you spun, and then it had the little cars with the little, the little pink and blue people that you drove around as you, as you played the game of life. And as we were playing the game of life, I, I, I could hear there were sirens going off in the background. And as we sat there for a moment, they kept getting louder and louder. And I, I, I realized there was, there was something that was going on of significance. So I stood up from, from, from the game and I walked to the, the front window and I pulled back, pulled back the curtains. And as I pulled back the curtains, I counted, there was one, two, three, there was four fire engines that, that drove right by in front of me. And I remember just taking pause at that moment and thinking, wow, there's, there's something really significant happening. There must be a, a pretty significant event transpiring. And I didn't think anything more about it. And as they passed and the, the sirens dissipated, I went and sat back down and, and went back to, to playing the game of life. Didn't think anything more about it. Well, the next day, uh, it was a cold November dark afternoon. And my dad had to take me back to my mother's house. And ironically, my mother lived on the same street, just, just a couple miles right down the road. And I remember getting in the car and driving in, in into the driveway and hearing the gravel drive under, underneath the tires as we pulled in, and it was really dark. And as we started to pull in, I could see this little yellow line appear in front of me. And I remember squinting, trying, trying to make it out, and, and, and couldn't, couldn't make sense of it. And as we pulled in, we came, we came to a stop. And I looked around, and there were several cars that were parked in the driveway. And I, I, I didn't understand what was happening. And as we got out of the car, I remember I grabbed my overnight weekend bag, and I put it over my shoulder. And as I stepped out of the car, a, a policeman came forward. And he knelt down. I remember he knelt down to talk to me. And he said, I, I need to let you know that an arsonist had gassed your mother's home and it's completely destroyed. And I remember sitting in there and, and, and hearing this and not being able to comprehend what that meant. And as I looked forward, I could see the, the charred remains of the home. And in this moment, I thought to myself, gosh, I, I remember I had my bag on my shoulder, like the, the reality of this, this is, this is all that I, this is all that I have at the moment. And as a, as a 10 year old child, uh, just literally the week before I had been to a fair and you remember the, the ring toss game. I, I, I played the ring toss game and, and for a dollar, I got 10 rings. And on the second ring, my, my ring went right over the bottle and I won this giant white teddy bear with this big red heart. 
and it that was the first thing that I thought of in that moment was is my is my teddy bear okay I didn't understand the scope of what was happening in that moment and for a long time I actually felt really guilty about even questioning of, about it but now, you know, as time has passed and in, in, in healing from that experience, I understood the innocence of, of a 10-year-old. But what really happened after that is that um, my mother, newly divorced woman, didn't have any insurance. And we didn't have any coverage. And the next couple of years turned out to be very challenging, to, to say the least, to experience sheer financial financial failure and financial ruin. And so I had to witness this experience and, and, and experience it as, as a child. And through this, I learned several, several lessons. And the first lesson that I learned was that of empathy. And that is that everyone has a story. And for some folks, some folks involve a traumatic experience, others it doesn't. For some and all of us, we, we, lose, we lose loved ones. Um, in some instances, we have you know, family members who have substance abuse. Um, there's complexities in life. And the complexities in our life weave into our financial wellness. And so these are things that we need to think about and, and consider. And so when we, when we come to our clients, it's about learning about what's important to you and what, what complexities you have in your life and what concerns you might have. But the second lesson that I learned through this experience was that of resiliency. And that is that um, we, can, we, we can think about tomorrow and we can get through, through challenging periods. But the last lesson that I learned was that about being forward thinking and thinking about what's next. And this event in my life really planted the seed for you know, not just being planful, but in ultimately trying to create a life that was fulfilling by helping other people achieve their own, own financial, financial success. And so I hope that as, as we go through this, you think about your own story and you know, where you are and the things that you've learned uh, along the way. Um, and you think about your goals and, and what you'd like to accomplish. So, one of the things I'd like to bring your attention and focus to is your own personal power. And when I say your own personal power, I mean, what's on your side of the street? What do you have control of? And so we're gonna explore that in the context of planning and, and what that means and, and how you can uh, put some emphasis on this. What are the things that are within your control that can ultimately help you to become financially, financially successful. So some of the big important questions that we're going to think through and that we hear from our clients routinely are, will I have enough to retire? You know, so we, we have clients that come to us and say, you know, am I on track? Am I, am I doing the right things? And so the first thing that we wanna explore is what is the North Star of your retirement? What is your vision? What do you want to be? Where do, you, where do you want to live? What will you be doing in retirement? We want you to dream big. And ironically, in, in this photo, um, this is probably one of my favorite places uh, to, to spend my time. It's a, it's a place called Lake Cumberland in South Central Kentucky. And ironically, I grew up spending the summers uh, on the lake with my dad. And it just brings sheer joy and happiness um, when I'm there to be, you know, near the water, to be near the woods, to hear the birds. And it's a peaceful place. And I see, you know, part of my own personal retirement is spending as much time as I can. And so when we think about, you know, the am I on track question, we really need to have an understanding of what your vision is and where you want to be. And, and, you know, we have clients who haven't, haven't thought about this, and that's okay. Um, it's okay to start now thinking through that. And so part of the conversation with our clients is learning about what your perspective is, how you see retirement. 
And so we have some clients that we work with that there's a magic date and they literally have an app on their phone that they're counting down the days to retirement and they know exactly what they're going to be doing on day one. And then we have some clients who say, you know what, I love what I do. I love working and I'm never going to quit. Um, and, and there are some complexities with that, but we can think through what those, those planning opportunities might be. And then we have clients that say, you know what, I want, I want flexibility. Um, I want to be able to consult and do some things part time, but be able to, you know, make my own schedule. And so we want to think through, you know, what, what is that, what does that look like for you? Because ultimately we're going to have to back into it to figure out where, where we're ultimately trying to get to. So as we start to flush out a little bit more this concept of, you know, your North Star in your vision, the main driver is going to be what we refer to as your retirement spending goal. And so your retirement spending goal is, is what it's going to take to achieve the lifestyle that you want would like to have in retirement. And so there's a few building blocks uh, that are a part of your retirement spending goal. So the first piece is just simply your essentials. So it's your fundamentals, your utility bill, you know, your, your insurance, those things are gonna be pretty consistent, but it's the foundation of your retirement spending goal. And then the second element is your lifestyle. So if you like to spend time on the lake or you're, you know, you want to travel or you like to golf, what are the things that are, you know, going to, how are you going to spend your time? How does that translate? So is it taking, you know, an annual family vacation or, you know, a more significant vacation every three years? What are, what are those things look like for you? And then the third piece that we want to think about are the unforeseen. And so, Recently, uh, in my household, we experienced a leak from an ice maker and uh, did some pretty significant damage to our hardwood floors. We literally had to move out of our house for three weeks while we had all of the floors redone, and it, it caused a little bit of disruption in our household, and it wasn't something we had planned for. So we want to make sure that we have a cushion that is built into your overall budget that gives you the bandwidth when the unforeseen happens. And, it, and sometimes it's not just... Um, an unforeseen issue, but it might be an opportunity that comes up and presents itself as well. And then the last piece around your retirement spending goal, and to some clients it's important and to others and it isn't, there is no right or wrong answer, it's just what your answer is, is around legacy planning. And so we have some clients that like to make gifts to their children or grandchildren on an annual basis, or they make gifts to a charity, or you know, to a cause or something that's important to them, is that something that is important to you that needs to be built into your overall retirement spending goal? But ultimately, this becomes what the North Star is for your retirement. And from a planning perspective, it's what we have to back into to figure out, are we on track? Do we have a shortfall? What do we, what do we need to do to close, to close the gap? So as we think about... Um, you know, your planning effort. We also want to think through some of these unique circumstances that, that, that women face, and some of them are headwinds. And we need to think about how does that translate into the planning that we're doing. So on average, you know, compensation is an issue. Women on average earn 18% less than, than their male peers do. And so you couple that with having a longer life expectancy, we have to save more sooner and um, use compounding and, 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 and you know, investing sooner to try to try to make up the gap because ultimately um, we're potentially going to have a life or long life expectancy and need a greater pool of assets, if you will. Um, and so what's happening as a result, women's nest eggs are about 59% compared, compared to their, their male peers. And even your earnings capacity, you know, your social security benefit is determined by your earnings. So if you're earning less, you're also gonna have um, uh, potentially less social security earnings, uh, or social security benefit, excuse me, than, than a male peer might have. 
So as we continue to think through some of these circumstances, I just wanted to highlight, you know, a few uh, areas that, that women are confronted with. Um, one, potentially having children in college, uh, but another really important one that we hear frequently from our client base is becoming caregivers for their parents. And as we've been faced with the aging baby boomer population, we're seeing more and more clients who are having to, you know, take some role or responsibility um, in helping, helping to, you know, care for their parents. And so these are conversations that are really important to have at the family level. And if, you know, your parents, if, if this hasn't come up, this is a great conversation to say, you know, I've been thinking about your situation, mom or dad, have you thought about what, you know, if you needed some type of care, where would you like to be? Who do you, you know, who, who would be caring for you? How would, how would this be funded? Uh, because when, you know, when we get faced with these circumstances and they haven't been planned for, it is much more challenging and, and much, much more costly um, when, when we, there hasn't been, you know, forward thinking and thoughtfulness around some of these, some of these issues. And then the other issue is um, women who are becoming widowed and the average age of a widow is 58. Um, and that's kind of a staggering number when you, when you think about it, but um, back to the life expectancy issue. And so how are we, you know, how are we having these conversations around our financial well-being with, you know, both spouses at the table um, so that they're thinking through what, what I call the the good days, the bad days, and the beyond days of life. And what, what plan do we have in place, you know, if and when something happens to us? So how do we, how do we prepare for this? And then the other element is um, women who are, who are divorced. And so when we look at the statistics, 53% of all women aged 70 or older are either widowed or divorced. So it's a pretty, pretty significant number when we think of um, the planning challenges that, 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 that come with that. So now I want to continue to bring your attention back to what's in your control. So perhaps you have one or more of, of these headwinds um, or challenges that you're presented with. Um, the, the things that are in your control when we think about financial success and retirement. Number one, when you retire. So when you choose to retire, there are quite a few financial implications around your retirement age. So let's just say you decide you want to retire at 62. Um, if you decide to retire at 62, we need to think through your Social Security claiming strategy. Do you plan to take a reduced benefit? It, it could be a significant haircut. Um, if you do that, do we have other assets or resources that might make up that difference? Or um, what about your health care coverage? If you're not to Medicare age, are we going to have additional expenses until we get to Medicare uh, to be able to provide, provide that coverage? So when you retire, number two, how much you're saving. And, and so as I alluded earlier, because of life expectancy, we need to start as soon as possible and tell our, um, you know, our kids, as, as soon as you get started in your first job, you need to enroll in your 401k and, and start saving the sooner, the better to take advantage of compounding. And then the third element is around the amount of risk that you're taking within your portfolio. So how are you allocated and, and working through with your advisor to think through, you know, your portfolio is the fuel, it is the horsepower into, you know, essentially achieving your North Star. So we want to think through, you know, what is the risk that we're taking and what is the reward and how is this eventually coming, coming together? And then the fourth piece is around your spending habits. And uh, largely the vast majority of, of clients don't know what they're spending. It's, it's pretty common. Um, I would encourage you, if, if you haven't had exposure to our 360 Wealth tool um, on Baird Online, this is a great tool that can help you start um, pulling together, you know, your expenses and your budgeting to get a handle on what some of your spending habits are. And, and the easiest way to go about this is if, if you haven't um, dug into this, and I would encourage you to do this because this is really 
what your North Star is going to be based on is, is your current um, spending habits. And um, what I would say is take, if, you, if you're not using a tool like our 360 Wealth, is to take statements from the last six months. Um, in our household, we use our checking account for our regular, you know, essential type of bills. And then our lifestyle is on a monthly credit card that we pay off at the end of the month. I would take six months for both of those and figure out what the average was and see if there are any outliers um, where the expenses that might, might have been a one-time expense, but just to get a baseline so we so we know what we're what we're actually spending. And the other thing that I think is important is not just, you know, as we talk about the spending piece, but getting your current snapshot of where you are today is really important. And your advisor can help you think through this if you don't already have. Um, but is to get a current financial statement. Let's make sure we have a net worth statement that highlights your assets, um, how your assets are titled, and the characteristics of your assets, as well as your liabilities. And looking at, you know, what are the terms, if you have a home mortgage, what are the terms of, of your liabilities? And this can give your advisor a lot of information about the construct of your overall financial current state. And do you have more assets that are in qualified accounts versus taxable accounts or tax-free accounts? Um, because we refer to it as asset location, the different buckets that you have, a more diversified asset base can be beneficial when we're trying to plan and determine, you know, where, where do we need to potentially draw income, income from? And so, you know, part of the conversation as we as we continue to, to put these puzzle pieces together and address your overall retirement planning is, is am I saving, am I saving too little? So one of the things that I wanted to provide you with a framework is um, we think one of the things we think about in retirement is what we call retirement income maximization. And so the retirement income maximization puzzle is really di driven by your retirement spending goal. So let's just say, for example, you say my retirement spending goal is to spend $75,000 a year. And that's what we're aiming for. We've done our homework. We kind of know what we've been spending. We're accounting for the lifestyle issues and, and things that we'd like to plan for. Then what we do is say, first, let's look at your guaranteed sources of income. So guaranteed sources of income, maybe you have a pension, maybe your spouse has a pension, is there, you know, we'll want to know, is there a survivor benefit on that? Sometimes we have clients who are looking through their election options when it comes to their pension and your advisor can help you um, evaluate pension options. And then the second piece is Social Security. And um, we can help look at what are your claiming options for Social Security. But this is kind of the fundamental piece of your spending because those are a baseline and, and they're, they're guaranteed. And then the second bucket that we uh, address is within business income and real estate income. So perhaps you own a rental property and you're receiving rental income. Perhaps uh, you have a business entity that you have ownership in and you're receiving distributions. We'll want to look at what the projected cash flows are for these entities going forward. And then the last bucket of this puzzle of retirement income maximization has to do with your portfolio assets. So dividend, interest income, are you taking required minimum distributions? How are we generating uh, income from your retirement? And this is a whole exercise that your advisor can help you go through, looking at these components of your retirement income and what is the most efficient way for you to extract this income. So part of the exercise is, are we on track to have enough to meet those goals and then what's the most efficient way to be able to be able to extract this this income, if you will. And then back to this question of um, what if there, you know, what if there are surprises that I'm I'm not ready for? So one of the things that we we think through, whether you're in your income producing years or your retirement years are is, is around your liquidity. And so during your income producing years, you should have at a minimum six months to a year of your fixed expenses on hand, uh, again, either for emergency or, or opportunity. And as we all witnessed 
um, going through the COVID experience, you know, a lot of folks experience a lot of sudden change. Uh, making sure that you had enough cash on hand um, was was incredibly important. And then during your retirement years, it's suggested to have roughly two years of fixed expenses, less any guaranteed sources of income. So if we go back to our, you know, seventy-five thousand um, dollar retirement uh, spending goal. We would say $75,000 a year times two, that would be $150,000. And let's just say you're earning $25,000 a year in Social Security and pension income, that would be $150,000 minus 50, which would put you roughly at $100,000 for emergency or opportunity. Um, but obviously, it's a little bit higher versus your income producing years as you're now reliant on your nest egg to, to meet your overall, overall needs. So another element that we think through are um, what we just refer to as a little bit of cash flow planning and looking at mapping out what um, that standard, you know, that standard retirement spending goal is going to be. Uh, and, and if we use the example of retiring at 62, perhaps we've got health insurance that we, we have as an additional expense for several years we we'll want to look at, um, you know, any short term or longer term expenses along the way. And then do you have any major expenses that are on the horizon that we need to think about? So oftentimes we'll have clients that are going to remodel their kitchen or, you know, they might be putting in a pool or doing something of that nature. And it's going to require an additional outflow. We want to put that into our projection um, to make sure that that's built into the scenario and then look at, you um, you know, what, what is our, what is our cushion along the way? And then we already mentioned the potential, the potential healthcare, healthcare expense. So uh, on, on this note, I, I, interestingly, uh, as women are living longer, the longer we live, the more ailments we potentially get. And as a result, we have higher lifetime um, expenses associated with, with, with health care. So this is something, you know, that, that needs to be factored into our planning. And, you know, as we kind of map out that longer term life expectancy for, for, for women, um, we, we can integrate these additional expenses uh, into, into your overall plan. But definitely something we need to think about and, and consider. So just to reinforce uh, where we've been in this conversation together, back to the four levers in retirement. The things that are within your control are when you retire, how much you're saving along the way, how much you risk you take within your portfolio, and then ultimately how much you're spending now, you know, potentially in your income producing years versus how much you're spending in your retirement years. And what we, what we typically see or witness with clients is that when they get to retirement, let's just say they've been spending X, is that oftentimes they actually spend more in those first few years of retirement. The spending actually gets elevated because they've had a bucket list that may have accumulated over time that they just didn't have the time to tend to. So their wish list was growing larger along the way. And then what we see after those, you know, first you know, the first decade is usually higher. And then and then we see expenses kind of plane off um, as, as things slow down a little bit. And then, you know, over time, we see things decline. And then potentially at end of life, we can see a spike in expenses again, if there's any type of um, healthcare related related cost, you know, if there's a long term care event. Um, it, the, the average nursing home stay is around 2.9 years, so just about three years. But if there's a cognitive issue associated with the event, like an Alzheimer's or dementia, that number doubles to, to almost seven years. And those can be very significant expenses incurred, incurred later in life. So when we're planning through retirement, back to my the good days, the bad days, and beyond days, first we want to start off with what is your vision? What, is that, what does that perfect world look like for you? What is happiness in retirement? And then we need to challenge it a little bit and say, you know, what if the bad days happen? What if, what if I, or perhaps my spouse has a long-term care event? What plan do we have in place? You know, back to those questions we want our, you know, potential, our parents to be thinking about, where would you be? Who will be taking care of you? 
um, how will this be? How will this be funded? And we can build that into your overall retirement plan because it, it is a retirement planning question. And then lastly, the beyond days um, and and potentially leaving leaving a legacy is important too. So. Uh, I uh, wanted to share a story. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I have a 15-year-old daughter who is a sophomore in high school, and uh, she is currently taking a personal finance finance class, which I'm, I'm super jealous because I, I didn't have that opportunity in high school. And I had just arrived home uh, after, after a day at work, and she was sitting at the breakfast table with her, with her Chromebook doing her homework. And she looked at me and she said, mama, in, in Tennessee, we say mama. She said, mama, she said, um, do you know what a stock is? And I said, yes, Hadley, I, I know what a stock is. And she said, well, do you own any? And I said, yeah, I, I actually do own, I own a couple, I own several. And she said, well, does daddy own any? And I said, yeah, he, he owns, he owns, we, we, you know, we, we own these together. And she said, well, I, I'm just learning about these and I think I would like to learn more. And I can't tell you how happy this made me to hear my daughter, you know, ask um, to get educated on investing. And I thought, gosh, what a window of opportunity to plant a seed for her to see that she is deserving of financial success and, and to take that and, and to have her see that and understand that now. So what my ask of you is, is, is as we you know, conclude this conversation together, is think about the, the, the mothers, the daughters, you know, the sisters, the women that are in your circle and ask them, how do, what does financial success look like for them? How do they how do they see their future? If they could daydream, what would what would the perfect retirement look like? See and, and see what they say and start opening up this dialogue if it if it hasn't happened already, that they they can start thinking about it. So we hope you can take this conversation and start passing it along uh, to folks that are um, important, important in your family, family circle. So uh, as we come to a conclusion here, I, I wanted to share, I've had, I've had the opportunity for the last 20 years uh, plus to be working alongside uh, our financial advisors. And I can tell you witnessing um, just the power of the relationships and connectedness that they have with their clients and, you know, how important this, this overall planning pieces. If, if you haven't engaged already, it's, it's a real opportunity um, for you and to connect with your advisor in this fashion, because um, hopefully it will, will, if you're not already on track, um, put you on track to become, you know, financially successful for whatever your vision is, is for retirement. And we can help you think strategically about the decisions that you have to make um, and I had a team, one of our teams one time did this exercise that we looked at the questions that clients have to solve at retirement. And we came up with like 17 or 18 questions. It was a lot. There's a lot to think through the decisions of, you know, when should I take my social security? What about my Medicare? Where am I going to live? How much am I going to spend? Uh, you know, how much do I need in my emergency reserve? There's really a lot to think through. And your advisor can really um, be an important partner into to helping you to helping you think through that. So uh, with that being said, you know, your, your advisor can serve as an objective, objective sounding board um, and, and help provide the guidance um, that you need to help with your retirement. So uh, I hope you come away. And if you haven't already, you start to think about your own planning and what those questions are for you and, and potentially daydreaming about what your vision is for retirement. And I'm going to turn it over to Justine. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Amanda and Heather. I work with you guys almost every day, and I've just learned so much about you. So really do appreciate it. I will just remind everyone in the audience, if you guys want to ask a question, we will host a bit of a Q&A right now. Um, so you can type a question in that Q&A chat on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. 
again, just be sure to address any questions that you have to all panelists. And with that, um, Heather and Amanda, are you guys seeing any questions come through? I haven't seen anything yet. Um, there, there was a question around, will the deck be available? Yes, so the deck and the recording will both be available through your Baird contact or Baird financial advisor. Um, it will take a few days. We just have to get compliance approved. So we say about a week following the call, we'll have that all available for you. Not seeing any other questions come through at this time. Oh, I do see one in here, Heather. Do you see that one? Let's see. I'm actually seeing a couple come in. So let's see. So, um, so I see I see a question just around long term care uh, solutions, and so th this is a this is um, a good conversation. What what I would say is there's you need to start when we think about solutioning for long term care. The first objective is to have your fundamental retirement plan in place first. So back to the good days, we need to get a handle on what that looks like. And then what we need to do is potentially stress test it with a long-term care, care scenario, the, the what if. What if I have a, what if I have a long-term care uh, event um, in, in retirement? And then we need to gauge, one, is there a shortfall? So, um, there's, there's the question of, you know, what type of care would I desire? What type of care am I able to fund? And there are multiple ways um, that, that you can solve for that. And, and in every, every situation is unique and different. Um, some folks use traditional long-term care type, you know, type solutions to fund. There are other more um, sort of asset-based tools that have, you know, um, some more like life insurance benefits associated with those, those have become more popular um, over the last several years. But I would encourage you to meet with your advisor to first look at your overall situation. It's really hard to solve for a long-term care solution if we don't have the foundational plan in place first. Because if we have the foundational plan in place first, it allows us to really solve for what the gap is. And if we don't know what the gap is, it's, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, the other, you know, then there's, there's self-insuring if that's a possibility, but it's a, it's a, it's um, a really, it's a broad conversation. And regardless that conversation should be had, whether it's funded, you know, through a life insurance type, I'm sorry, a, a long-term care type policy, or if it's, it, it's individually funded, we should have the conversation no matter what. Um, I see another question in here just around um, uh, just Social Security analysis and, and when to claim. You know, there, there are a lot of factors to take into consideration when, when we think about um, claiming your Social Security benefit. One, we look at what all of your sources of income are. We look at earned income. Um, we look at if there's a spouse, if they have a benefit, how, they're, how, how the, the benefits parlay together. But it's, it's really important to have that conversation and that broader co planning conversation back to the retirement income maximization because it is the fundamental, you know, of, of our spending goal. And we want to try to be as, as efficient as we can um, with, with that particular space. And then I also see the question in here just um, around um, the role that, you know, taxes, how does this come into play? Uh, obviously, this is this is an important piece of the puzzle, and um, you know one one of the things back to this conversation we were having uh, around asset location, and how much money I have in a tax deferred account like an IRA or a four hundred one k versus a tax free type of account like a Roth or you know just a regular taxable account, and through this planning process, what we do is we look at all three of these buckets and see from a tax standpoint what's happening. And so as, as you're likely aware, you know, at, at, and at 72, you've got to start taking required minimum distributions out of your retirement accounts. And when that happens, it's taxed as ordinary income. 
And so I like to use the analogy that, that qualified assets can potentially be like an apple. And that is when we get to that um, required distribution age, we have to take a bite out of the apple and we have to pay ordinary income tax on it. And there are strategies that if we get ahead of that sooner in retirement, it might make sense to, you know, look at doing some type of Roth conversion. It might make sense to look at um, extracting some of that money out sooner at a lower tax bracket before your tax bracket um, increases because the distributions have to come out in the future. So we, we certainly think through that overall tax piece and, and what's, what's, happening, um, what's happening there along the way. And let's see here. Heather, there's a question I just pulled up. Um, what is the full retirement age for Social Security? And is it inflated many it, times? Soon? So it depends. It, it depends on your birth date. So you can actually go to ssa.gov uh, and you can put in your birth year and it will show you your um, your uh, full retirement age. Right now, the highest age is at, is at 67. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the most recent oldest, but you can look back based on, based on your birthday and find out what your full, full retirement age is. Let's see here. And let me look. Uh, and one of the questions just around, um, in general, uh, we, you know, your advisor can create a financial plan for you that can outline what your goals are. Um, and then they can actually solve for this within our planning tools to show you, you know, where you are, are, are you on track, uh, for, for success in retirement? And that's certainly something you can inquire, uh, and ask your advisor about. And then let's see here. anything else I don't know if I'm seeing any more come in Heather okay that we want to address yeah okay so I will wrap us up here but thank you again Heather and Amanda really appreciate you guys hopping on um, we hope that everyone on the line today found this information useful and impactful um, for those of you who would like to re review today's presentation or listen to the recording another reminder this will be available through your Baird financial advisor as well as on BairdWealth.com about a week following today's presentation. Um, another piece, they did mention that women's retirement guide. If this is of interest to you, there's a variety of ways you can go and get this. Um, it's on BairdWealth.com. It's on women at Baird.com. Or for just a quick and easy way, you can email your Baird financial advisor and they'll be able to send the link over to you. Um, if we are not able to address your question or you would like additional information, again, reach out to your Baird contact and we'll, they'll connect you with the appropriate resources. And I will also remind you um, next month on June 15th, we will host a webinar on the topic of inflation and in regards to the markets right now. So look for that invite coming soon. But with that, thank you again, everyone. Amanda, Heather, thank you guys so much. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Justine. Thank you, everyone.